Brian Tuck, and today we are playing Legacy Peer into the Abyss Storm Combo. If you're unfamiliar with Peer into the Abyss as a card, it's a seven mana black sorcery that allows you to draw half of your library rounded up. That's what it does. So on average, you'll draw 20 to 25 cards. You get to do degenerate things. It's a lot of fun. Well, one of the nice things about Peer into the Abyss is that it doesn't lock you into uh, a deck restriction like ad nauseum would where you have to keep your overall converted mana cost or mana value as we're calling it now down lower so you don't have to run or you're allowed to run things like force of will in conjunction with peer into the abyss which is just really sweet um and that's one of the nice things about this deck in my opinion and on top of that you get to unlock cyborg cards like leyline of the void massacre force and negation or even <laughs> consigned to oblivion which you know if you revealed this to ad nauseum you would actually take seven damage off it where that's not a concern here so when we look at this deck it's sort of a hybrid between doomsday and ad nauseum tendrils in my opinion we've stolen the personal tutor tech from doomsday to go get our peer into the abyss or thought sees it can also get these high impact cards out of the cyborg like consigned to oblivion and massacre and post board games which is really sweet so we get to do that um but we also get to play a little bit more like doomsday in the fact that we have days and force of will you know those sort of things and then uh we're more like ant in the fact that we're running dark ritual a reign of filth to enable our cabal rituals and all that good stuff so um, I feel like this deck is pretty self-explanatory. We're trying to ramp into Pure and the Abyss and then eventually cast the Lethal Tendrils. We have four Lotus Petals as initial mana sources post Pure. I'm a little bit nervous about that, that it might not be enough, but I guess we'll find out, you know, in this video today. We have Malevolent Hermit out of the sideboard, uh, interaction for the combo mirror, but also it's really good against eight cast because they can't remove it from the table. And then that way you don't need something like Abrupt Decay or whatever. So we're trying out the Malevolent Hermit today. Uh, Leyline of the Void is obviously for Graveyard decks. Force of Negation is for Prison decks and then other combo decks. And these are pretty self-explanatory. So I hope you enjoyed this brief tech tech. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, whatever, put those down below. I do my best to answer all that stuff. But thank you for watching this. I'll see you in match number one. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. That said, there's no better way of showing your support than becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks, and we get to keep making combo content. The perks get better and better each level you go up. They also stack. To start off, with our Storm Fan tier, you unlock our private member section of our Discord, which comes with a highlighted user profile, and then some awesome badges and emotes for YouTube. Looking for a Cyborg help? Become a Stormtrooper, our middle tier, for two Cyborg guides of your deck choice every single month, on top of 50% off donation decks. Did we mention you also get 10% off merchandise from our shop? With our top tier, the Combo Cabal, you get a free donation deck every single month, 15% off merchandise from our shop, early access to private deck lists, and the most valuable perk in my opinion, videos early. That's right, you heard it, early access to all videos. Videos. But maybe Sweet Perk Secret Deck List Early Access to Videos isn't for you, but you'd still like to show your appreciation. Make sure to check out theepicstorm.com slash shop for card singles and storm swag. Please don't forget to use your membership discounts. Finally, if you want to see your combo deck here on this very YouTube channel, make sure to visit theepicstorm.com slash donation decks, where all you have to do is attach your TXT file and pick a donation tier. With our epic tier, you can even join me in a video to showcase your bold brew in person and explain the ins and outs of your strategy. Card availability won't be an issue due to our new sponsor, Card Hoarder. With Card Hoarder, renting is super easy. If you're looking to get into Magic Online, Line, there isn't a better, more affordable solution than Card Hoarder. Fun fact, you can rent the Epic Storm for seven tickets a week, which is just a great deal. There are many ways you can support us. Just pick whatever is best for you. In the meantime, let's play some Magic. Round one, we're facing Hugo Frida's, and we've opened up Double Force, which is pretty sweet. Uh, we have a blue card. So this hand's awkward in the fact that we don't actually have a second land. To get uh which is pretty weird um we have double pier which is essentially a mulligan so i think i'm going to just leverage the london mull here and uh you know do that 
This seems like a keep to me and we just bottom this tendrils of agony. Keep tendrils on the bottom. Den of the bugbear, okay. Draw. Let's cast Thoughtseize. I'm gonna grab Underground C because I have this daze. And Thoughtseize you. Well then. <laughs> uh, I think you're supposed to take Chromox here. Try to just keep them off mana. Moon Stompy, okay. There's the other Den of the Bugbear and they're passing the turn. Draw. Horse is a good pickup. Let's try to find land number two. And we did. All right, so we have force, which is nice. I think we're actually going to redraw this Cabal Ritual. All right, so next turn, I have seven mana, and I have force backup at the moment. Okay, draw the Cabal Ritual. We'll just grab Island here. So Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual is five. Cabal Ritual would be six, and the Island is seven. In theory, I guess you could daze your own Dark Ritual and then pay so that way. Uh, and that would give me a land drop too, but I don't think that's really what I want here. And peer into the abyss. Okay. So let's play out this Lotus Petal now. Oh, our opponent decided they had enough. Okay, <laughs> good deal. So we definitely want these consigned to Oblivions and we want the Force Negations. We don't want Pact Negation, that card's just too slow here. It also has no relevant text on it. Uh, so we're at 64 cards right now. I wonder if you're supposed to take out Thoughtseize on the draw. I'll get rid of these Personal Tutors. Maybe cut the Reign of Filth. And... I, I, I don't love how I'm boarding out Personal Tutor and then boarding in the Consigns, but I, I just think that um, they're not great in this matchup. They might be good at... Like, this interaction might be better in another matchup. I think I'm going to go down to two Thoughtseize on the play, and if we lose game number two, I'm probably going to board it back in for the third game. Okay, game number two versus Moon Stompy. Snap keep, so good. That's sarcasm, we're definitely taking a mulligan here. And our new hand is... Finish. They mulliganed as well. I think I'm going to keep this and we'll just bottom the Wish Claw. I have to hope that they don't turn one lock piece me because I didn't keep a hand with one of my eight forces. Uh oh. Oh, it's just turn one war boss. Okay. I mean, this does kill me somewhat quickly, but it's not a lock piece, so that's what I really care about. Draw. And let's fire off this thought seize. Den of the bugbear. Okay. We're at 17 life. Mountain and one unknown in hand. We're taking five down to 12. And they ripped Trinosphere? Come on, you're killing me, Smalls. We just lost the game. All right, game three. Ah, what a draw. Okay. So we'll bring in the Thoughtseize and it goes out. Is it the Atawara? Probably shave one peer actually. Let's try this. Game three on the play. Yeah, this is pretty good. Keep. Turn one ponder. I want to find mana here, and these are perfect. Okay. 
I don't know if our opponent's seen any of our force effects yet. So I could daze this. If they have a spear guide, I'll have egg on my face, but... Alright, daze. And they have a spear guide. So now I have to force this. Okay. They're passing the turn. Do I want land number three on top? I think that's the question here. Because I have another land. And I think I just want to fetch it away. Then on the bugbear. That's annoying. Yeah, that resolves. All right, I, I am going to fetch away the uh, the other fetch. We have to find our consign now. Might as well play out this pedal. So if now if I find the consign, we have pure lined up. And Rebel Master is such a fast clock. We're we're definitely in danger here. Okay, come on, Doc. Give me consigned to oblivion. Draw. Can't cast those. Yeah, my I'm definitely close to death. Alright. I'm wondering if the consign's even fast enough at this point. Like I think I have to draw it right now. And that's going to get me. Okay, we lost round number one. It's a bummer after how good uh, our opening hands were. Game one and three, both my opening hands were very good. Okay, we are zero and one. If you haven't joined them already, I would recommend opening up our description down below and joining our seven social media networks. They're each great in their own way, but I would strongly suggest joining our Discord server. In there, you will find others just like you looking to improve their Storm game and grow as a combo community. If you're a member of our YouTube channel, you should sync your account to Discord to unlock our private member section that has the latest and greatest deck lists, concepts, and much, much more. Let's get back to comboing out. Match two, we're on the draw. I mean, I have Force Blue cards, some Dark Rituals, but no mana. We have to ship it. Um, I don't think we're actually allowed to keep this either. We're going to five. So this is not a deck that mulligans well, which is a concern of mine. Uh, you don't have anything like Echo of Aeons to bail you out, unfortunately. So every mulligan is just super punishing. Um, when people talk about Ant, they often mention how... Ooh, Amber facing a Dalver deck. Um, how you don't want a mulligan because it's a critical mass deck where every card matters because you're a Cabal Ritual deck. All that stuff applies here as well. We're just going to attempt to resolve Ponder. Ponder resolves. Um, honestly, I don't think I want any of that. I'm going to shuffle. Okay, so we have Days. Flips to Ponder. Dalver gets in and we'll fall to 16 life. And their own copy of Ponder. They played a Volcanic Island and they did not shuffle their Ponder. Draw. Let's attempt... Um, yeah, I'm just going to do it now. Let's attempt to resolve this Brainstorm. And it works! Okay, so... Question is, what do I put back here? My problem with force is that it requires a lot of resources, so I'm somewhat inclined to uh, put that back. So this Pluto Delta is the fourth card to the graveyard. And I think I'm just going to fire off Thoughtseize here. This is going to be the fifth card. If they brainstorm here, ooh, okay. So that has to resolve. Uh, I'm just going to pass now. And I'm going to F6 because I don't want them to think that I have counter magic. Um, I would uh, honestly, I, I want them to tap out for like an expressive iteration or something here. Volcanic. And they're not tapping out. Draw. I'll take another thought, Seize. So we'll go to 10 life. And they have force. Okay. So we'll go to seven. 
If they play Expressive Iteration here, I'm going to daze it. A little blue and daze. This just stops them from digging for another forest, and they have Wastelands that they can play as lands for turn. So I don't get any value by waiting. And they just told me that they drew a Volcanic, so I, w this pier is going to resolve. Draw. Dark Ritual. Ball Ritual. Turn to the Abyss. We're at three. Lotus Petal. All right, so there's a Rain of Filth in there. That's good. And the Tendrils, so we've got this. Dark Ritual. The Ball Ritual. The Ball Ritual, Storm 8. I guess we'll cast Rain of Filth, why not? And then the Chicken Tender, spell number 10. There we go. All right. So we got game number one. I don't even know if we're supposed to sideboard here. I feel like our main deck is kind of set up for this matchup. You could maybe board in one of these. I don't know if that's actually something we're interested in. I don't love the Hermit here because we are facing a Pyroblast and Lightning Bolt strategy. So this card seems sort of sketchy, at least to me. Uh, not really a Force Negation matchup. Some people really like boarding in Leyline versus this deck because it slows down Murktide, makes, um, well, I guess, yeah, Murktide's never being cast, right? And then it makes Channel R a 1-1 forever. But I don't know. We already saw the Delvers out of this opponent. I think we we're just supposed to resubmit. Game number two versus Is It Delver? Or if you're very, very old, Blue Red Delver. Hmm. I think this hand's a little bit of a trap. So we have to get Underground Sea to cast this Brainstorm, and we're playing into all their tricks. Tendrils is clunky. I think you're just supposed to ship this. And they kept seven. All right, this hand is much better, in my opinion. We'll keep and just get rid of a polluted Delta. Or maybe you're supposed to keep the Delta and ditch the island because we have Cabal Ritual another thought right, i'm going to play out the pedal here to avoid something like days these are all great okay delver secrets sure what are you holding up your mana for because it looks like they're just always holding open one but i could be wrong okay, let's ponder probably taking the wish claw that's on top yeah and then we're going to cast this Thoughtseize. Maybe it's just a Brainstorm and they were doing that on turn one? Like, what's the deal? They're activating their Bloodstained Mire. This looks like a Brainstorm to me. No, they chose not to Brainstorm. Really? Uh, okay. That's odd. I wonder if that was a misclick. Delver does not flip. And Brainstorm. Okay, we'll gladly take one down to 16. Five cards in the opponent's hand. Scalding turn. So you could probably assume they got rid of the Volcanic at least. Draw. Another Claw. Play it. And it resolves. Love to see it. Activating their Scalding Tarn. They are not at 18 life. Is this an unstep Brainstorm? Petty Theft. Okay. Delver does not flip again. It is not well trained. Press of Iteration. Reveals Polluted Delta. This Petty Theft essentially time-locked us, unfortunately. The bright side is that the Delver is not uh, flipping. And a Ponder. So they still have Wasteland Brainstorm in hand. Mishra's Bobble. Target Sauce. Okay. 
So they'll draw a card off their bobble, and then we go to our draw step. Force of will. So they know that we have a force now. And Wishclaw resolves once again. Delver triggers. Does not flip. Yikes. Gotta get those things trained. Send them to school. Cantrip Academy. Maybe it should have been like Can Flip Academy. I don't know. All right, we're at 14. Fluted Delta. All four volcanics are in play. That's a channeler that is unleashed. So, press of iteration. We'll let that go. I'm going to cross off the wasteland because there's a reasonable chance that they put it back on the brainstorm. Murktide Regent. Okay. Draw another petal. So, can we win here? Petal, petal would be six cards, seven cards. I think we should just play it slow and we'll play a Wish Claw. I think it's just a little bit safer. We'll pass the turn. Delver triggers. Reveals force. Okay. So now we're going to take six and then we will be at eight life, which is still one more than we need to not die to lightning bolt. Post peer into the abyss, that is. And brainstorm. So I think our best draw on our turn is likely a blue card for this force. And opponent's passing with four cards in hand. Time to go to work. Draw. Ding. Um, I'm going to play the pedal first. Dark Ritual. That resolves, and now we will add some mana. Okay, Cabal Ritual. So if this resolves, we will have eight mana in our mana pool. Okay, so I'm actually going to go get another ritual here. Uh, I just want mana floating when this peer resolves. Okay, Cabal Ritual. They, they would have to have triple counter to stop here into the abyss here. Okay. We'll grab peer and cast it targeting us. Force pitching Delver. Back to negation. There is still this brazen borrower in exile. We'll move that over there. The channel or trigger. And they're going to fetch first. Sure. Here into the abyss. Force pitches days and we will force back. Here into the abyss. Love it. Dark ritual. Dark ritual. Come all ritual. We could always peer into the abyss again, by the way, and draw another 10 ish cards if need be. Okay. Uh, we have the tendrils. What a bummer. I guess we won't draw more cards with peer into the abyss. But on the bright side, we will be one in one, which is always, you know, I like winning, so that's good. Uh, round number three coming up in just a quick second. Playing your favorite combo deck and paper just got so much easier with the Epic Storm mini token pack. You can pick one up at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $13. It includes 64 double-sided mini tokens. That's 128 tokens total. And they include 10 black, 10 blue, 10 red, 5 green, 5 white, 3 colorless, 20 storm counters. That means that you can count your way all the way up to 20 for grape shot. Everyone's favorite Stormwind condition. A Galvanic Relay Exile Indicator, four treasure tokens for Strike It Rich, and then 10 monk tokens for our vintage friends. It also has Slime Time Live! 
Eve Progenitor Ooze Tokens with the power and toughness already built in to make playing in paper so much easier. No fumbling around with dice. We've got you covered. Make sure to go grab those if you're playing modern. And then Squirrels vs. Goblins, Chatterstorm vs. Empty the Warrens, the Battle of the Ages. You definitely need 20 Squirrel Tokens and 20 Goblin Tokens. You're going to love this mini token pack, I promise. And once again, you can grab that at theepicstorm.com slash shop. Match three. Once again, no land, so we're going to ship this. All right, so we have Personal Tutor to go get Peer into the Abyss. Um, I think this game is kind of slow. I mean, I'll try it, but I don't love this hand. Would it even be better to just personal tutor for ponder? Great. Delver again. Yikes. Okay. Draw. Okay, well, now the personal tutor pitches the force. That's good to see. <laughs> um, yeah, so we have to get the threshold and find peer. That's our goal. Channeler getting in. And another channeler. Okay. I'm not going to force those. I don't think that's how we should try to play this matchup. Draw. Pass. Opponent with four cards in hand. Going straight to combat, so we'll take two. I'm fine if these are their combat steps where we're only taking two damage. And they pass again. Draw. I'm going to hold on this personal tutor for another turn cycle. My my fear with it is I want to have days available, but if I cast personal tutor, that's not going to be the case. Ooh, the sneaky lightning bolt. And they kept both cards on top. So that means these channelers are not becoming delirious, at least right now. I mean, it could in their main phase, who knows. Ponder. Mills a chain lightning. They have instant sorcery land. All right, still not delirious. Ponder. Um, so we have three mana, four, five, six, seven. And now we're taking two down to 12. Come on, blue card or appear into the abyss. Draw. Yikes. Okay, um, I'm gonna fetch first. Just grab the swamp. Personal tutor. They have four cards in hand. Grab here. And pass. Now they're up to five. I'm worried about double force beating me here. We're going to nine life. Draw. Like they're not casting spells. That's this that's the honestly scary thing. So if I go ritual five, six, seven, eight, I would also lose the double days. Am I a crazy person if I wait? I feel like yes, because they're a lightning bolt dock. Dark ritual. I don't think that this is going to go well for us. Varichul. Varichul. Six, seven mana, and peer into the abyss. Force pitching force. We will force back. And I'm not surprised that they have a second force here, so we are going to lose game number one. All right, time for game two. Based on how this game played out, you could tell that your, our opponent was just sitting on a bunch of forces. And same game plan as the previous round, I'm just going to submit the same 75. Game two. Hell yeah, keep. Okay, so I'm going to lead off on the Thoughtseize here. Grab the Swamp. That hand I don't think is very good. Uh, let's get rid of this Brainstorm. Okay. Volcanic Island. Draw. Wish Claw's a good pickup. Let's play that. 
pass the turn. Steam vents tapped. Okay. Draw. Days. So I think we could, in theory, try to win here. Um, so I could activate Wishclaw, go get Rain of Filth, cast Rain, float a blue. So it'd be three to the graveyard plus Rain of Filth. Um, I'm actually one card short for Threshold. I think I'm just going to pass. Island. Dollar Secrets, they're holding two cards in hand that we don't know about. Draw, Lotus Petal. So we could in theory go for it now, but if they have Force Blue card, we're going to be uh, pretty sad. I think it's better to push. Let's go get the Reign of Filth. Cast Reign of Filth. Sacrifice the Swamp, Sacrifice the Island. Uh, let's add a blue here. Add a blue. Sacrifice for black. Cabal Ritual. Cabal Ritual. Here into the Abyss. Firm 5. And it resolves. Love to see it. Okay, Lotus Petal, Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual. And we drew the Tendrils. We just have to play a few more spells. Uh, let's cast Brainstorm, why not? Put two lands on top. Dark Ritual. Witchclaw Talisman. And Tendrils of Agony. We're off to game number three. I'm just going to resubmit. I think Ridiculous is fine. Game three. So here we have Dark Ritual appear into the Abyss and a ton of protection. I'm going to keep it, but I'm really concerned that this hand isn't good enough because we need a lot more mana in order to cast this peer, even with all the protection we have. And it's unfortunate that our land is an underground sea, which can be hurt by wasteland. I don't know. Turn one volcanic island. Ponder. And they did not shuffle off the ponder draw. Bush claw. Yikes. I just have a feeling we're going to be eating dirt in a second when we uh, get wastelanded. And I don't like to eat soil. Just throwing that out there. Like, I don't know if you're supposed to. Like, this hand seems what we want to be. Ah, oh, and there's the waste. Yep. Rip me. And I'm not allowed to discard the tendrils because it's literally the only way we can win. <laughs> uh, Get rid of this wish claw. I guess I shouldn't have six. Okay, draw. Not looking good. Yeah, maybe I was supposed to just mulligan that hand. I don't know. We're definitely going to force our set. We have to force this daze. So we have nothing going on. And uh, we did some nurse it from hitting the table, but I think we're too far out of it. Pass the turn. Okay, well, I guess the bright side is our opponent has no clock whatsoever. There's a Delver Secrets. Draw. Okay. We're almost 25% of the way through our deck without drawing land, too, which is kind of wild. Delver does not flip, and they chose to keep it. Interesting. Four cards left in the opponent's hand. Can I please draw a land? Like, there's a small chance that I'm going to choose to believe that we could still win this as long as I draw a land. Flips the ponder. Okay, so we're going to 14. 
This next draw puts me at that 25% mark. There's Ponder. They did not shuffle off Ponder. And the opponent's passing the turn. Come on, deck, please. You're killing me. Um, I'm just going to pass and discard this days here. So we can actually cast the Pier into the Abyss, but we're so far off from that being something we want to do that I don't think it's um, even worth trying. Okay. Channeler and our opponent has five cards in hand. Bobble. Mills Wasteland. Targets themselves. And they're choosing to keep it. That's not a good sign. Draw. All right, so I think if I'm going to win this game, I'm going to have to get a little creative. I'm going to discard the peer and try to natural tendrils them out. That's my game plan. Also, like, I feel like we're hitting some, like, historically bad luck with never drawing a second land this deep into our deck. Surgical on Underground C. Sure. There's one other Underground in there. You got it. Although now they know that I have Tendrils in hand. I don't know. I still think I'm supposed to discard the Pier. Um, so they, they're attacking for six. Yeah. So if I cast both copies of Thoughtseize, I would go to one. I guess it would shut off a fetch land. I just don't see this Pier ever being a card that's relevant. Okay, so we'll take six and go to five. Okay. Draw. We drew a fetch land. So I don't think we're going to win here unless our opponent decides to misplay a whole bunch. Thoughtseize. We're also just dead a lightning bolt, and we saw that they kept them in game two. Okay, so... Oh, I don't have an underground seed to fetch. That would be, uh... Yep, I knew that. And so if that's the case, I was supposed to start off on Dark Ritual, and I just didn't. My own fault. Uh, I don't think we're going to win this game anyway, but we are now one and two. Hey, you're still watching. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe. If you're looking to make a purchase from Card Hoarder, TCG Player, or Amazon, and are looking to support us, you can open up our description down below, and in there you will find our affiliate links. Those same links are found on the homepage of the Epic Storm, but that's not all. We've included a Card Hoarder button on our website that will load the Epic Storm in your Card Hoarder cart to make life simple for you. Match four, we're on the draw. This hand seems pretty reasonable to me. Let's see how it goes. Island. Okay, draw. I think I'm just going to start off on Ponder. If they're holding open Brainstorm, I don't want to play Thoughtseize into it. And these are all pretty good. Uh, yeah, we'll keep this. I'm going to let Ponder go. I mean, I could daze it here. I don't think it's worthwhile. Flooded Strand. Draw. Am I getting stifled? Okay. I apparently am getting stifled. Um, Flow to Black. We'll daze it. Horse pitching brainstorm. All right, I'm going to let that go. And let's just thought seize them. Okay, so they have double swords to plowshares in hand. Okay, so they drew polluted delta. We're drawing the personal tutor. The personal tutor, I think, is just our pitch card for force at this point. 
Um, I'm gonna shuffle this. It does. It's not good enough. Like our hand is pretty close to being able to win, and all those cards I think are just, eh. Like we're just really looking to push the envelope at this point and start achieving our game plan. Draw. Another land. Okay, let's go to fifteen. Let's play Claw. Okay. So they have double swords to plowshares and two unknowns. Draw. A lot of lands. Okay. So now they're up to three unknowns. Fetch. Draw. And we're just drawing all lands. <laughs> There's a Delver. Okay. Draw. This is just like not going well at all. I think we're just going to grab the Peer into the Abyss here. And then let's just immediately Atawara the, uh, the Wish Claw back to our hand. Pass the turn. Delver triggers. Okay. Stone Forge, sure. So we'll take one from the Delver here going to 12. I feel like there's a lot of anti synergy in your deck. If your deck is like a prismatic ending, Stone Forge, and then Stifle deck, like these are all powerful cards aside from Stifle. Uh, I am someone who thinks that Stifle, like, I know it's tough to, uh, it is a very good card against me because I choose not to play around it because it's such a small portion of the meta game. But I also think it's one of those cards that hasn't aged well, but older legacy players just love to play that card. Um, so I don't think it's something that should be in your deck, especially when there's a lot of anti-synergy, like Stoneforge Mystic plus Stifle. Like it just, it's not what you want. Okay, and that resolved, and it should just be cake from here. All right, Cabal Ritual. We got some Lotus Petals. That's Lethal Storm. That's Tendrils. Okay, going to game two. We're just going to resubmit again. I guess maybe I could board in the Massacre, actually. Let's do that. And I'll board out the Reign of Filth. Let's do this. Actually, I could board out the Personal Tutor, too. Is it better? All right. Okay, it already submitted. Can't change that. I'm not trying to make anyone bad feel bad that play Stifle. It's just like, in my opinion, it's like Duress and Preordain. Where there is a time period where that card was viable and it's past. Um, sort of just is what it is. Turn one Scalding Tarn. Tundra into Delver. You got it. Draw. We're just going to main phase a Brainstorm here. So we saw red out of our opponent. And stifle, so you don't really want to play into their known tricks. Your thing. Pass the turn. Delver triggers. This time it flips to Enlightened Tutor. Okay, so we're going to 16. Draw. Brainstorm. Okay, um, I think we just get rid of the brainstorms here. Let's fetch. And that resolves. The Enlightened Tutor probably means that they have Canonist. So our decision here is to cast this Thought Seize or try to ponder into a daze. Um, and they just let it go. They have double Enlightened Tutor. Yikes. Okay, um, we'll just take the force. Incoming canonist. Yep. 
So I need to find the main deck massacre now. Okay. Yep. We're at ten. That can find massacre. Um ponder. Ooh, this cabal ritual is good. And this is an artifact, so we're allowed to play it through the canonist. So we'll take five here going to ten or they didn't cast ponder. They drew force. I am dead. Uh they drew force. Like I I'm just absolutely dead here. Why wouldn't you cast ponder then? Yeah, they got me. Okay. It's weird. I guess they were playing around days, but like if I daze, I lose the game anyway. That's strange. Um, I don't think I want to board and consign here. I guess they did have multiple copies. I guess I'll try boarding those out. On the play for game three. Sure, let's try it. Search up a basic island and cast ponder. All of these are great. S. Flooded Strand. Draw. I'm just going to play out the pedal. This way I can play around days and then play the Wish Claw. And Enlightened Tutor. We're going to let that resolve. And then we can just daze the Null Rod. Okay. Pick up the underground sea. Okay, so that's a good sign. We have a brainstorm on top. Let's cast that. Uh, can I win here? I don't think so. Um. So two to the graveyard. Yeah, I can't win. I think I'm gonna keep this massacre though. They're fetching. That's unfortunate. Um, yeah, we just have to let the needle go. Okay, we still have a fetch land on top of our deck. Now they name Wishclaw. And Ponder. They shuffled off the Ponder. Should I just jam? Well, that was an F6, so the answer is yes. Okay, incoming peer into the abyss. Target us. Storm 3. Hi-o! Okay. And our opponent is conceded. We are now 2-2. Two and two. If you're looking for more great Magic the Gathering content, definitely check out the Eternal Glory podcast. It is myself, Brian Cook, alongside Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher. We primarily discuss Legacy. That said, a lot of what we talk about transcends all formats. We're available on all major podcast platforms. The fifth and final match with Pure Storm. This time we're on the play. Um... Sure, let's try it. I think I'm just going to start off on Misty Pass. Try to get a little bit more info on how I want to use this Brainstorm. Ay ay ay. Legacy's so boring. Draw. Okay, let's cast Brainstorm. Put these back. Search up the basic island. Whoops, don't want to tap that one. Ponder. Hell yeah. Okay, pass the turn. Okay, so the Dragon's Rage Channeler will trigger and brainstorm. They kept their card on top. Scalding Tarn. And a Delver. Alright, so we're going for a turn three Peer into the Abyss with Days back up here. 
But but I meant by like legacy so boring, by the way, is just like there's no reason for you to not be playing blue red Delver. It's just like by far the best deck in the format. And it's just like kind of lame that like leagues, challenges, everything is always just this deck, and Wizards refuses to just like actually fix the problem. And instead they print sets where it gains four new tools. All right, so we have five cards in our graveyard at the moment. We're going to go grab the basic swamp here. I guess I could grab the uh, underground sea in case I brainstorm it into another daze. It's probably a little bit better. We did not. Um, so I think it's actually better, and this is going to sound crazy, for me to take the Atawara here. Because it means that I can pay for a daze where if I... Take the Dark Ritual, it actually hurts me a little bit uh, because a daze on this ritual would be backbreaking. Okay, what about a Cabal Ritual? Am I allowed to have that? And another. What about Disbiss? And it just resolves? Wow. Okay, Lotus Petal. Cabal Ritual. Dark Ritual. Our opponent's seen enough, and we are off to game number two. Oh. They decided they had enough altogether, so we went three and two. Ah, uh, geez. Okay, so I guess we technically beat Delver twice. I don't know if I have strong opinions on this deck or not. It was fun to try. Uh, I do think that Peer into the Abyss with more expensive cards like Force are... Um, what, what am I trying to say here? An unexplored thing about this format. I can't help but think of when I was a kid, there was a vintage deck called Pitch Long. And when I was a, when I was young, when I was, you know, a spry young chicken and not old with back pain, a lot of the legacy decks were based on vintage decks. But at the time, one of the most popular versions of Long, which is just Tendril Storm, uh, was called Pitch Long. And it ran Force of Will, it ran Misdirection, and it ran Unmask. No Storm Engine in Legacy has ever been powerful enough to make that happen. But now we have Peer into the Abyss. So I think you, in theory, you could build a Force of Will Unmask deck that abuses Peer into the Abyss with the ramp of Cabal Ritual with um, like the free spells with like Force of Will and Unmask and all that good stuff. I don't know if this is the perfect deck list or not. But I had fun playing it. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Thank you. I do appreciate you. Keep storming and have a terrific day. Hey, Brand Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.